The problem is not a new one but nobody feels comfortable discussing it. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But to fix a problem and not just perform triage we have to have a long-term approach. A healthier population means fewer trips to the doctors which logically results in a reduction in healthcare benefits paid out. Perhaps then we could go to a universal healthcare system that would be less expensive for everybody. The problem is obesity. Obesity is not genetic. It's not a disease and it's not caused by the type of work you do, your race, environment or age. It's caused by taking in more calories than you burn. Take a walk in any mall in America, along an ocean beach, down a school hallway, anywhere many people gather and you can see the problem. Burn more calories than you take in and you're not obese. It's that simple. This is not rocket science. There may be a few exceptions. People with some other physical disorder that contributes to their being obese. It should be understood that this exception is very very rare. The vast majority of overweight or obese people are this way as a result of their own poor choices. Talk show hosts have had people come on and describe themselves as fat and happy. They are comfortable with themselves with who they are. Many people watch this and it's the excuse they need to continue doing nothing. This is not the message to send. It's tough. Who wants to be told that as direct result of your own choices, you have jeopardized your health to the point where you cannot take part in everyday activities, have put your life at risk and contributed to the obesity of your child, children? The answer is nobody. We are all responsible for the rise of obesity in our society. This includes those who are obese, their parents, friends, doctors, teachers, etc. We have carried being politically correct to the edge of the cliff. We don't tell someone they are fat. They are big-boned, stalwart, chunky, husky, getting older, have a different body type, etc. This is ridiculous and doesn't help. We need to say, you are overweight and you need to do something about it. Contrary to what is said on talk shows, most people are not comfortable with being overweight or obese. This is seen in looking at the amount of money companies are spending on advertising weight loss. In 2015 Nutrisystem spent $35 million on advertising. In 2017 that figure skyrocketed to 209.4 million. Obesity has become a billion dollar business in America. The following is an advertisement for the 72-hour slimming pill. 72-hour slimming pill is an all-natural recipe. 72-hour slimming diet pills were designed to help you lose those last few pounds that won't go away. This powerful concoction of all-natural non-toxic ingredients is designed to help you lose 7 to 15 pounds in just 3 days. This formula will boost energy levels with vitamin B. Be more energetic, safely melt the pounds away and keep them off with the 72-hour slimming diet pills. 72-hour slimming diet pills retails for $29.99. You can buy it now for only $9.99. There are literally hundreds of diet pills out there offering the same thing. Companies know the best time to advertise. It's January. On New Year's Eve, revelers many of them overweight and obese are out for one last good time before beginning their New Year resolutions. Top on that list for most people is losing weight. In 2018 in January alone companies spent a combined $181 million advertising weight loss products. Owners of fitness centers and gyms know this too. They offer reduced prices and other incentives at this time of year to increase their membership. It works. People flock in determined to shed those pounds and get in shape. This is good. It shows people want to change things about their lifestyles. The people who do this have a better chance of success than those who succumb to the quick fix gimmicks of pills or meals in the mail. People need to realize that the quick fix gimmicks don't work. It took a long time to put on that weight and it will take time to take it off. Americans want it all. They want to eat as much as they want, drink as much as they want, overindulge and then take it all off with a pill while they sleep. If you're serious about getting healthy, losing weight and getting back into shape it requires a strong effort. But it's worth it. Why is it as a society we have no problems telling people where they can and cannot smoke? Smoking is legal. Companies make huge profits off of the sale of tobacco items. But people scream about the dangers of second-hand smoke. You shouldn't smoke, smokers know that. If you smoke today you are treated as a pariah. However fast food places continue to spring up everywhere. We have campaigns to get people to stop smoking, kick the habit with Nicorette gum or the patch. 
The message is clear, stop. A regular diet of fast food can cause heart disease, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, Blunt's disease and respiratory problems. It seems like we should be doing more to encourage people not to spend their money and health at fast food restaurants. Perhaps the signs outside McDonald's, Burger King, White Castle and Wendy's should carry the warning, eating here can be hazardous to your health. Anybody who has been overweight or obese will tell you that a certain freedom comes with weight loss just as it does with the freedom from alcohol, drugs, tobacco or any other thing we choose to let control us. On a reality television show called Intervention, family members gather to tell a loved one that they need help for an addiction that is destroying their life and the lives of those around them. Obesity is doing more to damage our society than either of the above-mentioned addictions combined. It's the pink elephant in our society, we all see it but nobody is comfortable enough to talk about it. There are many reasons for obesity in our society but the biggest one is ignoring it. If this problem continues to be ignored it could one day lead to our demise as a nation and at a stretch the loss of our freedom. Eating can be comforting when we are depressed or stressed. How many times do we reach for food when we aren't hungry? If you're like me it's a lot. I'm bored, had a disagreement with someone, financial stress, etc. We all do it. The trick is to realize it and go get a glass of water. Growing up in the 60s and 70s it was rare to see people overweight. I remember the first television our family owned. It was a second-hand, black and white with three stations. We watched it in the evenings after my father watched the news. My siblings and I spent most of our days out of doors with the rest of the neighborhood kids. The bottom line is we burned a lot more calories than we took in. Today people are less active than ever. Many people hate exercise or complain they don't have time. Modern conveniences such as the remote control for television, elevators, motorized scooters for kids and cars have added to that inactivity. I have read articles from healthcare professionals stating, even making small changes like walking your dog can make a difference. Letting the dog out the door burns 2 calories. Walking the dog for 30 minutes burns 125 calories. Taking the car to a car wash uses 18 calories. This is well-intentioned but if you're overweight or obese this type of activity is not going to reverse that. I know this from my own experience. I am now in my 50s and I am 50 pounds lighter than I was in my 20s. I no longer smoke or drink. It took a long time for me to make these changes and longer to see the results. But I understand what it's like to begin, to feel better about myself, to persevere, to see results and to want more. The vast majority of people have the time and ability to make these changes but in order to do so they must first begin. Forget about the diets and the quick fix gimmicks. These often require money people don't have that leads to increased financial stress, leading to more emotional eating and the cycle continues. What is needed is a scheduled workout routine. This routine should slowly build on the week before. The routine should mix resistance training with cardiovascular training and incorporate good meals. There is no need for fancy expensive meals. Food purchased from your local store will work just fine. In the beginning it's important to cut back on sweets and snacks. As your workout routine progresses and your metabolism speeds up, listen to your body and it will tell you what it needs. Sometimes it will even be sugar. If you have benefited from this video, immediately hit the subscribe button and bell notification now for your next inspiring video. If you would like to lose weight, click the link in the description below to learn more.